Another southern snowstorm possible as we go into early next week. Tuesday, Wednesday is the time frame. Hi, everybody. I'm Chief Meteorologist Chris Justice. Please let me know where you're watching from right now. And if you're new to this channel, please like the video, subscribe to notifications, and turn those things on because we're going to have a lot of things change in the coming days. But one thing that we're tracking here is cold air is a certainty for all of the United States next week. But we do have a developing snowstorm which could impact so many across the south that frankly have not had much in the way of wintry weather in the past couple of years, but the models are continuing to show today with great run to run consistency, some sort of a snow and ice threat going into next week. So what does that look like for your town? We're going to break it down right here and show you how we get from where we're at right now to that potential threat. First things first, it is going to be so cold going into this upcoming week. Let me take you to Sunday. This is the brand new model, the European. You've got a sharp contrast of 60s in the coast of Carolinas into Georgia, 70 towards central Florida, while Asheville's at 31 and these cold temperatures are diving down. <clears throat> Sunday into Monday is when things get just really brutal across the country and you've got below zero temperatures starting to enter the picture into the upper midwest washington dc on inauguration day looks to be in the order of about 18 in the morning 22 23 in the afternoon one of the coldest inaugurations we will have had in recent history of course, they get all kind of weather during Inauguration Day, but this one's going to be a cold one. Going into Monday, I've got high temperatures struggling to get out of the 20s in the mountains of Western North Carolina, northbound, and I've got temperatures struggling to get to freezing on Monday, Martin Luther King Day, National Championship Day, a lot going on around the country. Now, as we go into Tuesday morning, this looks like perhaps one of the coldest mornings we'll have. Below zero temperatures trying to stretch down into the mid-Atlantic and northeast and then into the Apple. Appalachian Mountains here in Boone, surrounding areas, zero or near it. I've got uh, teens across a good bit of the United States that continue into our Wednesday morning. Check this out. I've got minus four in Beach Mountain, Sugar Mountain, around four degrees in Asheville and Hendersonville, 14 in Greenville, Spartanburg, 13 in Charlotte, 19 in Atlanta, and that freezing line goes all the way to Central Florida, where a uh, freeze will be possible uh, in northern parts of Florida there. Uh, uh, getting close to Orlando in some cases. So the cold air is going to be in place. What about frozen precipitation? Well, the models are going back and forth on any kind of potential here. Let me show you the chances for that with the latest European model. Let's back it up a little bit. Sunday into Saturday, we Saturday and Sunday, we've got some showers, but it really doesn't bring much drama. Half an inch of rain at best in some locations. <clears throat> It's the cold air that follows that's either going to be really, really cold and dry or like the models are hinting at today, could be cold and snowy. This European model wants to paint snow as early as Tuesday morning into the afternoon hours. That would continue to be a little southern scraper right here and then move on out. This is one solution that's possible. The European model here paints a couple of inches out of that. No real defined low pressure system, but it does have enough snow covering in a lot of areas. But there's a few things in this operational run, as you'll hear us talk about. There's a couple of runs that are called operational runs of the model. They run twice a day, mainly 7 a.m., 7 p.m. They finish about midway through the night and midway through the day. Those have a lot of computing power that go into them. But there's also something called the ensembles, which I'll show you in a minute. And that's a better way of forecasting where we're at in the, in the ball game here, so to speak. We're five, six, seven days away. There's a couple of things here that make you go, hmm, will there be a swath of big snow from Charleston, northern parts of Savannah toward Myrtle Beach? Maybe, but is that likely? Not really, if history tells us. What is more likely? Well, let's first average out all the different runs of the European model. This is GSP taken, for example. The model wants to show two and a half inches. The average of all 51 different one of them, uh, one, ones of them uh, show about two inches. So, wow. And as you look at all the 51 different runs of the model, they're in this Tuesday-Wednesday camp, with most of them being Wednesday morning into Wednesday afternoon camp. Uh, out of all 51 of them, I think there's maybe two or three, maybe four. So four out of 50 say no snow for GSP. 
Now Charlotte, Atlanta would be kind of uh, confined in there as well. So the majority, almost all of the European models want to show some sort of snow. How about the GFS? Well, the GFS is in the camp of it's going to be really stinking cold and dry. It suppresses that low way down to the south here across the Gulf of Mexico and takes it over Florida and doesn't really provide any winter weather threats. Is that right? Probably not. If you look at the average of all 26 different runs of the GFS, they offer a different scenario. That's why I say looking at the average of all the models is a far more responsible way of forecasting. You'll drive yourself nuts looking at one run of the GFS. And, you know, that's why you got to trust the right people when you're for, uh, doing a forecast, whether it be tropical or severe weather or wintry weather. If you look at one computer model and kind of hang your hat on that, it's a fool's errand, right? Uh, you're, you're, you're going to be disappointed is, is my point. So if you average all the different GFS models out, out of 30 of them, they paint measurable snow across a lot of the south, whereas its operational run is dry. So there's, the answer lies in between somewhere. How about the old Canadian model? Oh boy, Canadian doing Canadian things, right? It is showing it's just so silly cold, <clears throat> as we know from all the computer models, that's a given next week. But how about precipitation? Well, the Canadian, if you're a snow lover, is a classic Miller A type track, which if you love snow, this is what you want in the South. It tracks close enough along the Gulf of Mexico to throw back moisture and close enough to the Atlantic and turns at just the right time to allow a big screaming snowstorm here up the I-5 corridor where many would just get dumped on with snow. This is the ideal setup for snow across the south with that low curving right up and becoming a nor'easter here where this would affect millions across the east coast. Now this aligns better with what I would expect. Ice further south, snow further north, do we get ice in central, or uh, I should say the panhandle of Florida? It's possible. It's happened before. Last year, we had snow in the panhandle of Florida. Is it that far south? Probably not. So again, the answer lies in between. Like I mentioned, if you're uh, a lover of snow, like many of you are following on here, the Canadians, your friend here, look at this. It absolutely dumps snow on us. This would be uh, Tuesday, one to two inches. Wednesdays, when it really ramps up, we would get anywhere from uh, five to six inches along the I-5 corridor. Atlanta, seven and a half. Uh, Charlotte, seven. Greenville, Spartanburg, somewhere between six and eight. Asheville would be eight. Higher elevations would be almost a foot of snow. And that would stretch way back toward uh, northern Mississippi, northern Alabama. So again, is that the answer? Probably not. Is it somewhere in the middle? Yes. Out of all of our GFS runs, roughly 40% of them show snow. Out of the Canadian run, almost all of them show snow, with several of them actually quite a bit of snow. And, and that's, that's pretty interesting as a Canadian model's uh, average sits somewhere around four inches. So simply put, if you're wanting an average, is it going to snow in my town? I get that a lot. What about this town? What about that town? Well, if I average all the ensembles together, remember, an ensemble forecast is me taking the European model, breaking it down 51 different times, and setting each one a little bit different. Maybe I jog the, the first through the fifth models a little farther to the north and throw in some colder air. Maybe I throw in some warmer air with models six through 10. Basically, you're trying to trick the model. And if you average them all together, you get a clearer picture of the forecast. And as we do that and map that out, here's what the model says about whether we have an inch of snow or on the ground or greater. Basically, the ground is covered. Well, the European model offers us an increased chance. This yellow here uh, is kind of the the 50 percent line would be all the way to I-20. So here's 50 percent. Here is 70 percent. So the model here showing there's about a 50 to 70 percent chance of measurable snow in Atlanta, Greenville, Spartanburg, and Anderson, and Charlotte. As you go up toward the mountains, that's pretty much a guarantee. The models are showing this European model, I should say, of today is showing about a 100% chance. So simply put, my goal this week, being that we're five, six days out, is now looking at the trend. First, we've identified there's a threat. There's a threat on Tuesday, Wednesday. Now the goal is, 
is that threat going up or is it going down? And a responsible way of doing that forecast is looking at the average of all the models. And right now they're saying it's going to snow and it's going to cover the ground in many areas. Folks, if you like this uh, approach to forecasting, please like this video. Let me know where you're watching from. That really helps me out. Subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. Uh, my goal, as always, is to keep you informed so you and your family can make plans as you navigate out this storm system. One thing's for sure, it's going to be so cold next week. I've got my high at 27 in many areas, my lows in the single digits and teens. Will we get snow? It's possible. It's too early to say, but the time frame would be Tuesday into Wednesday if we do get it. Have a good day, folks.